I met Alex on top of a ladder about 10 years ago. He came to do some work for me. When I first saw him, it, 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 instantly, he was so good looking and, and so nice. And he's the most laid back guy you could possibly imagine. Very opposite to me and very kind. So I always have this little bit of a crush on Alex. I used to be really vain. I'd always spend time in front of the mirror, do my hair, make sure I look good, have the right shirt on, make sure my jeans are nice and tidy, good shoes. Always judging around by shoes. <laughs> we were just an ordinary family. Me, Lucy and our son Sam. Then, just over two years ago, I caught a common cold. It was to change the course of my life overnight. People saw that I'd lost parts of my body. But what people couldn't see was the incredible impact that it had on my family life. You know, Sam is scared of Alex's face. It's not really hard for me to see. He knows that I don't look right. I can see it in his eyes. It's just like, what, what, what's happened? You know, before I fell ill, we were miles apart. He has to work as hard as this relationship as he did before, because I am certainly not going to feel sorry for him. I remember Saturday morning, both Sam and Alex were ill. Alex just opened up the door and his eyes were popping out of his head and his whole, and he didn't have his top on and his whole top half was just purple. Literally, it was, it was happening in front of me. He was going purple. It, you know, he was shivering. He didn't really know if I was there or not. He was, like, going unconscious. I didn't know what this was. You know, for me, he had the flu. Ambulance emergency, tell me exactly what's happened. My husband's body is full of rat, it's just rash, it just looks a state. He's had the worst, worst headache for like two or three days, like a crippling headache. He's been vomiting, has he? Yeah, well? and he can't um, urine, and there's just always oh, just blood coming out. He's just aching, he's just aching. Okay, well, we are organising help for you. Stay on the line and I'll tell you exactly what to do next, okay? Okay. The paramedics were in our kitchen and they put him in the seat and they couldn't get any um, blood or anything out of him or do anything because his veins were shutting down. You've never seen anything... I've, n I've never seen anything like it. I've never even... I've never... I'd, it just, just didn't contemplate to me that this was... this was this serious. Well, when we got into the ambulance and they sort of get him some penicillin, I was thinking, yeah, God, he's going to be OK now. It's, you know, he's in safe hands now. Alex's flu-like symptoms were caused by a common bacteria normally found harmlessly on the surface of the skin. In an extraordinarily rare case, streptococcal strand A, or toxic shock syndrome, had entered Alex's body and was attacking it from within. The doctor came in and sat with us and told us that he had strep A. I didn't even know strep A existed. Didn't even know what strep A was, didn't have a clue. Everything was dying, all his toes were dying, all his fingertips were dying, all his earlobes, his nose. I thought we would lose him. I didn't think he would survive. We had a decision to take. The surgeon said the left arm was going to kill him if it wasn't removed. So I gave the approval for the left arm and she hurriedly spoke on and said, and following the arm, we're going to have to take both legs. And she then said, and I'll do my best with the right arm. She worked on his right arm and she worked hard on that with the hand, but the arm has to go.
I came back the next morning and I felt very scared for him and very vulnerable for him, really vulnerable. You know, I can recall waking up and I can recall the pain. I can recall seeing friends around the bedside when things were really bad. When you're on life support and you're, you're in a cove, you have no idea what's going on. You, you have no concept of what's happening. And no one's going to tell you, well, we think you're dying. And I can recall the pain of, like, God, that, that, that is really real, you know. My legs are gone. They called me in and they were going to take him off his ventilator slightly to see if he had brain damage. And all these consultants, all these nurses around me, and they said, would you ask him a question that he can shake his head out that only you two would know in our relationship for the last eight years. Every morning I'd wake up and say, will you marry me? No. So I asked, would he marry me to see if he had brain damage? And he said, no. So no brain damage. Absolutely fine. Brain is working fine. Over nine months, Alex undergoes 11 major operations to stabilise his body. He spent most of this time in hospital, away from his family. Yes, wait after me, Don't tell me off. <laughs> Alex's partner, Lucy, and their three-year-old son, Sam, visit him as often as they can. Lucy and Sam, you know, those two, they mean the world to me. I'm incredibly lucky to have them. Lips are on the way. Mm. Clap. All open again. Huh? All open again. Oh, so it's a yawn to laugh without hurting. Today, Alex is ready for the first operation on his mouth. The family hope it will help rebuild his face, but it will be the first in a series of operations that could last over two years. I did a mood board. I chose my George Clooney lips. No? I think that's tall. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Let me in. It's the old daddy. Why? It's, it's really hard at the moment because that poor little lad's seen so much of his dad go through vast amounts of change physically. For Sam to see his father like that is quite scary. See him you know, looking like a completely different person. Right, say goodbye to Daddy. Bye, Daddy. Bye, Sam. Kiss, give him a kiss. Yeah, on his, give him a kiss on his old lips, because he's going to get new lips. Yeah, I look so alien to him, I think he struggles to get close. He'll give me a hug, but he certainly won't kiss me. Mm -hmm. Facial surgery for the relationship with Sam is, is hugely important, I think. Hopefully it will make all the difference. Ideally, to look like how I used to. My heart's pounding now. I'm just genuinely excited about this. I'm really, really excited to get to just not look like that. Yeah, I shan't miss it. After 13 hours in surgery, Alex has returned. You know, you look at it and you think, Jesus, what on earth is <laughs> what am I looking at? And I think it's it's the shock factor. I felt very scared, I felt alone, you know, I, I couldn't stop crying. And then once my surgeon explained about the skin on the right, excess skin on the left, I thoroughly understood why. You know, you can either get into skin tightens too quickly or, you know, you can use it again rather than keep taking bits of skin off you. They can use the skin that they've taken the first time. You know, I, I said to Lucy, I said, look, you know, maybe people should be warned before I come out of hospital what I look like, you know, because it is quite a shock. And she's like, it's not, it, you know, you, you're looking at it the wrong way. A big red cow. <laughs> After almost a year of operations, 
Alex has returned home with the hope of adapting to a new life with his family. Yeah, it's going down. Yeah. It's gone down this side. It's all going to just grow into your face, isn't it? That's how it goes. Yeah, that's fine. Don't feel lopsided. Don't look lopsided. No. Look at me. Straight on. No, just because you've got a bit sticking out, which is your extra flap. No. You still look like a clown. Look like, Daddy? Me. Cow. <laughs> uh, I didn't think going into the surgery that it would have this profound effect on certainly me and on Sam, but unfortunately it has. Come here. I want to give you a big cuddle. Not kiss. No, not kiss you. Yeah. I think if I was a three and a half year old and I was looking at my father. In, in this condition, then I would find it very, very odd and very strange. I miss that time with Sam and the closeness an awful lot. It's, uh, it's the one thing, I think, that gets me the most out of all of it. Definitely. Who's the customers in there, John? Now that Alex is at home, Lucy has returned to running the family business, a pub and guest house on her own. Just, How many rooms does she want? Well, she's like, this one only wants one. Oh, that's fine. Moment. One's fine. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Alex is now being looked after by a carer at home while he continues his rehabilitation and surgery on his mouth. Okay. That one. I'm on more. It was really, really hard the first time I'd got back into bed with him to have a cuddle. It's like getting him back into bed with somebody that, you know, after you've been away from you, Getting, but I didn't know who he was. I was too scared. I was too scared to touch him or ask for a cuddle. And it's afraid, you know, he's afraid of his body. You know, he must probably thinks of himself, oh my God, this is what she's ended up with. What Lucy must see, you know, from how I was to how I am now. You know, I, I think I just can't imagine what she thinks when she looks at me. I don't know if she struggles or not. It's very hard to, hard to see with her. You know, she works so hard all the time. You know, she's always stressed out. It's, you know, it's hard work. And, um, you know, I just think without all this, it would be a lot easier for <laughs> You know, everyone, and I'm sure people do still think it, you know, why am I still with him? Do I, you know, why? I absolutely love and it's the first time that I've ever loved anybody as much as I've loved anybody. You know what, when I got with Alex, I didn't care who it was as long as A, he made me smile and made me a cup of tea in the morning. Now the cup of tea in the morning has gone. But he still makes me smile, argues, questions me and he's the only person that does that. So yeah, love, not because he had nice legs, shocking legs. Shocking legs. <laughs> so I don't really care about the legs. But yeah, love. Alex has been home with his family for six weeks, but is now returning to hospital for an extended period of rehabilitation. Are you going to be OK? Yeah. In an effort to improve his motor skills and become more independent, he'll stay in a rehabilitation centre for ten weeks. You scared? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, dad, let's go. Okay? Okay. Okay. This is a step for me to get, you know, a bit of my Alex back, and this will give him his independence back. Call me tonight, then. Yeah? And work hard. Say, for the first time in your life. Very, very anxious at the moment. Full of anticipation, I think. Now, are you in a hurry because you're in a hurry, or are you in a no, hurry no, no. because this is your usual speed? That is the usual speed. Okay. So sometimes I can. That's really good. I can hitch it round. The most difficult thing for him is to lose his arms. Yeah, well done using the bed. His loves in life are golf, cooking, reading, writing, drawing, and they all take all hands, you know. And he was a big hugger. Alex loved giving cuddles, especially with Sam. Do you want to try it first and see? Yeah, yeah. Had I made him go to the doctors earlier, or had I made him do all these things sooner? You know, I saw he was ill, but not now being able to hug his son and have that feeling of a proper cuddle, I think, yeah, awful. Have you have you done much cutting up food? No, none at all. OK, that's good. I need to find you a bigger piece. Having been given prosthetic arms for the first time, Alex will attempt to learn basic tasks again. Try it like that. And then see if you can get... Except that's the wrong angle. Just go and get that. Mm -hmm. I will pick that... I will pick that bit up first. Pick that bit up first. Mm -hmm. And then... Oh, see, wrong way up. That way up. And then do a that. And a push... Oopsie, do that and a push in. Okay. It's going to take a little, little bit of working that one out. Sure. And just try picking that up with your with your hook. Yes, that's good. Well done. Well done. Is it a slightly too slightly too long, a, too high a cut? Let me get it, let me get a slower one. Get a slower one here. Which would actually also make it a better angle. the non-slip mat, the Dyson mat? No. It's, uh, it's very hard. It's very hard. For me. <laughs> At the moment, you're thinking <sighs> weeks and weeks of it. You know, you play the long game, but, you know, it's still very hard. But it's the only option we've got. Just take your weight to the left hand side, please. To the right hand side. Right, right. Uh, right hand side. My left. <laughs> you should have that. The rehabilitation centre is more than two hours' drive from Alex's home. With a busy pub and guest house to run, Lucy can only visit with Sam once a week. Hello, hello, hello. I saw that in in in, in Mummy's face. Yeah. Is that was that the photo you texted in my my mummy's yeah. face? Yeah. Hey, I didn't know. Yeah. Ooh, who's it's that ball? The big lips. Who's that? That is the wrong way round. Huh? That is the funny wrong way round. Well, you got your feet wrong. Sam is really important for Alex. Had something to you know strive for to. To, to wake up every morning for, to make sure that he's got somebody to be proud of. Yeah. 
You know, he's still Sam's dad, no matter what, he's Sam's father. No arms, no legs, no way. He has to be a father. He has to be a role model for Sam. And if Alex shows that he's so powerful and so committed and so driven, it will only go through to Sam eventually. It's all right. Hmm? It's all good. It's all good. Oh, come on, Sam. Back to work. I don't want him to feel that that, I could, that perhaps I can't do anything. Do you know what I mean? I don't want him to feel that, you know, because I've lost legs and arms, I can't, you know, I'm helpless. Alex is on a weekend break from rehab. It's a rare visit home to spend time with his family. Ready? Didn't work. <laughs> People do stare. But they're going to, aren't they? I mean, it's quite shocking. I know. Yeah, I don't know do you think they would stare as much if it wasn't for his lips? I mean, he has got Bart Simpson um, lips. <laughs> do you know what? He hasn't changed personality-wise at all. He's no. still... The same Al, but he has got more drive than he's ever had. I'm glad he hasn't become a recluse, has he? Which he no, could have quite easily no. become a recluse. I think the only thing that's changed is the fact that he does have a drive. He's not, can you say, lazy? Maybe this was meant for him. If that come my way, I would have rolled over and just switched off the machine myself, if I could. Every nurse seemed to tell me, down there, it's fine. Every yeah. single nurse had to tell me on every shift. It's OK. It's OK. It's okay. <laughs> like... I was more worried about the liver test coming through. So Alex liked to drink. And it came but, back and it was normal. But then, like... Quite... You know, I was drinking masses and masses of alcohol back then. Unit-wise, I was easily an alcoholic. And I think I was starting to become a little bit lost in that because I wasn't very happy. Before Alex fell ill, the pub that the family was living in was struggling. Lucy then opened a second pub to rescue the business. At that time, there was not enough support with what I was trying to do. You know, I had to go out to work every day. And it did put pressure on us. It was a really stressful time. We literally see each other for a few hours a week, in fact. We were pretty much separate. You know, Alex loved drinking. He was in one of our pubs all day, and he would drink too much where I'd come in from work every day and been working and Alex would have been having a drink at the bar. That didn't help. I just felt like he was just taking the piss, really. Now, it'd been very easy for him, A, to become a recluse, to into alcohol again, and I'm not going to bring Sam up into that. Oh, I feel good. Do you? <laughs> Alex is back in hospital for an operation to widen his mouth. She is making you so you can smile properly tomorrow. Open your mouth now. There. It's small, though. Very small. Right. Okay, so sorry. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. So, finally, the surgery has arrived. And Sam, you see me go from six foot bloke to, you know, three foot ten, no legs, no arms, you know, facial uh, surgery on the go for the foreseeable future. That clearly must affect our relationship as big an effort as I can to look and be like that you really help me and try and rebuild that closeness between us. For me, you know, going through with that one little boy, I can't, I can't imagine where I'd be now. Yeah, he's in a big factor, that boy. I think it's nice that in the future to realise just how important he was. He was a bit of a glue, really. He sort of kept us all together in his own way. He said, far more important than I think you'll ever understand. 
The surgery lasts the whole night. The following morning, Lucy and Sam are the first visitors. Teddy, I see your teeth. I see your teeth. Eat that big now. If I see your teeth, I your tongue. Oh, yeah, no, actually, your teeth are nice. They were black. And how's the gum? Open your mouth up. Let me look at the gum. Ooh. We were just thinking, a lolly could go in it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. You do it. Oh my god. Ooh, Daddy, yeah. you, your one got smaller. <laughs> you sucked it. Yeah, because he's got a bigger mouth in there. Yeah, because I, I chomped a bit of it and then everyone panicked and thought they thought I was going to die eating it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you do that because you'll ruin your teeth now. He's allowed to. We've got to eat it. It's a sweet. Chew a bit of it. So. Right. 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 So when he has problems with his <laughs> teeth and he's going to the dentist, you can get in the car and take him. Every time. Yeah, well, that's the only when you go to a dentist, it's been a good way to get a lolly. So how's that work? Samuel, don't listen to your father. I <laughs> will. <laughs> go and wake them up. Ready for first day at Ooh. Hello, morning. First day of school. This is the first day of the rest of your life today. Sam. Yeah. Come on. Just waking up. Just waking up. Jeez. Sam's been the was the, the key to this whole thing. And getting Alex's attitude because that one day he'll go back walking the dog with Sam and Sam will say a lot when you've got big legs that we're going to be playing football. Yeah, it's quite, I think it's quite sad he's got to go to school now. So it's like an end of the innocence in a sense. Like he's all grown up. Drink your drink. I don't drink it in my mouth, I drink it up my nose. No, you don't. Drink it through your mouth. <laughs> Eat your cocoa pops now, no, otherwise I'll beat you. Come here. Right. Come there, oh behind. my goodness, the, this button's gone again. Got me. You and your minis. You love your minis, don't you? Well, be brave, be brave, be brave, OK? You'll love it, Sam. You're going to Trust love me. school. Don't you'll cry, because I'll have cry. You'll have so much fun, honestly. What did I say? I said, if you cry, I cry. <laughs> Mummy doesn't cry. Come on, then, okay. I kiss good daddy. Hey, you all right? Kiss. Big boy? Big boy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> love you. Mm. Nice daddy it. kiss. Can take that hat off. You won't be there long, and I'll see you this afternoon. But you're not going to be there only a little bit. OK. Give daddy a kiss. Where's, where's Jack, Jack and Claire? Where's Jack, Jack? Jack, Jack's Come on there, Christian's there, here. Christian's there. Christian's here. Okay. Okay, give Daddy a kiss. It's alright, you'll be alright. Huh? <laughs> I'm not going anywhere, I'm not going anywhere. It's very difficult for Alex to, when they go to school and see all the other dads, all the other dads can run and play. Alexander can't. See you later, Have fun. Yes. Alex feels it, of course he does. He's his dad and he wanted to do those things with him. It hasn't happened. But it will happen because Alexander with legs will be able to do the things that other dads do. But I do think through this period, he's missed an awful lot. They really go for the shoulders, so they lift them right up to your ears and then all the way around. Lovely. It's been one and a half years since Alex fell ill. He's leaving home again and returning to hospital 
to increase his mobility by learning to walk on advanced prosthetic legs. Yeah, they are the legs. Yeah, it should be good. Try a kick with the right. Let's try the right. Yeah. No, that's got that's got no interest in staying on there. So what's happening is the air is get not being stilled out, so it's coming loose while I'm walking, bringing air in. And that's it. And that's it. And that's it. Okay, up we come. With Alex away, Lucy continues to manage their business and run the home. It's, it's mostly on a mess. Probably. There's, there's a load of shoes up here. He's got hundreds, all his shoes. It's all packs up shoes. You know, all, they're not, like, none of them have ever been worn. He'll have, at some point, he'll have prosthetics that will have his feet on them so he can go back to wearing shoes. So he's going back to size 11 feet. He's already chosen his Gucci loafers that he wants me to get him for when he uh, starts walking again. I think it why, will why do. Why would it be special? Why would it be special? Because that was who Alex was, his identity was. He loved putting a jacket on, he loved putting a shirt on, and he loved dressing up. So I think for him, his identity will be back and he'll be back and make him feel sexy again. Wow. <laughs> I just don't tell her too much, really. You know, I'll tell her a little bit, how was your day? Yeah, it was fine. You know, I'm not going to tell her, well, actually, got the legs at nine, they were back in the workshop by 10, didn't get them back till one o'clock in the afternoon, or whatever, you know, I leave, all that gets left out. You know, she's got enough to get stressed out about her home with, you know, the business and Sam and stuff. She gets enough out of me, but not everything. Uh, how about you your Def no, definitely not everything. Try not to rush it, so from each Good. heel, roll over onto... Oh. Alex has been given the best prosthetic legs the NHS has to offer. If they work, he's hoping to become less reliant on his family. No, that's all right. You know, it isn't the right leg. You know, it's one thing having people put the liners on, but it's another thing being unable to lock the leg to be able to get up. It isn't what's best, but it's the only thing that's half decent and available. It's not good. Not good. <laughs> yeah. Oh. No, I think it was the prosthetic coming back that caught the. Uh, oh, this. I think so. That caught, I think it caught that. Right on there, you right on there. Yeah. Hello. Hi, darling. You right? Good. Yeah. How are you? I'm good. You're right. No, you're lying. Huh? Yeah. You're lying? No. How's it going on? God, I feel like I've been beaten up today. Have you? Why? I fell over a lot. You fell over where? Where's your hook gone? It's been amputated. <laughs> <laughs> this afternoon, it was like I'm over tipping on the right, so I stacked it about three times. Did it hurt? Yeah. So they've taken it away again. And how do you feel? Mm, frustrated at the moment. You know, I did say today about my left left leg falling off. It's falling off. It's falling off. I think off. And it, the only said, person no, that knows not. what's going on is you. And I think you're yeah, no, I intelligent enough, and you've read so much about this, and you know exactly what exactly what you want. You know, in a perfect world, I want to be, you know, be still able private. To do, it, do it privately. I don't know. We can't afford it. No, no. Who can? You know, mm. knowing how bad the system is now with the prosthetics and the aftercare being in the system, knowing that I'm going to stay in the system probably for the rest of my life, realistically, knowing that doesn't really give you much confidence, does it, in the future? And I can't see it getting any better. This is something that you've got to fight for now, all of it. Yeah, but you if you can to. make a few changes, you're going to have to do it. That's it. I'd always be by your side if you needed me to yeah, be. Yeah, I would yeah. always be there. If you asked me to be by your side, I would be there. Hmm. I got asked yesterday, somebody said to me in the restaurant at a point where you said, you know, you wanted to walk away. 
And I said, never. There's never been a point where I've wanted to walk away from it, ever. Never. It's never, ever even questioned. It's never even come into my mind. Mm. So you're very lucky. Walk away from this, you must be mad. Why would I want to walk away? Well, exactly, exactly, exactly. Oh, God, it'd be so much easier. Yeah. So much easier. Yeah. But I like a challenge. Yeah. Hmm? You got one. Mm -hmm. I just had a call from Alex to say that he was coming home on Thursday night. He checked himself out and there was no point in being there because taxpayers' money is being spent on some equipment that he's never going to be able to use. I decided to leave Roehampton. It was a difficult decision to make because they've been fantastic all the way through, but it's simply not within their budget to spend any more money on the knee joint, which is the right knee joint that I need. Yeah, he's disappointed in it. Oh, God, yeah, really disappointed in that he's not going to get him. All he wants is a pair of legs. There's nothing else. But you just can't get them. We need to figure out a way how we can do it ourselves. I don't think I'll be tying shoelaces anytime soon. I've come upstairs to sort through all the clothes that I've had um, stored away. Everything, pretty much, is obsolete. All the shoes, the shoes that I love. Yeah, just here to have a look at it all again for one last time, I guess, and then getting rid of it. I feel like I'm a different person you know, to how I was like prior to when I fell ill is much, much different. So, yeah, part of me is kind of ushering out the old and, and welcoming the new. It's quite cathartic, I think. You know, it's, it's quite, it, it feels quite clean to, to get rid of them, really. A lot of those clothes have seen an awful lot of drinking go on in the years gone by. You know, and I don't miss being like that. I don't miss those days. Oh, you don't. What did, what did Daddy used to drink at the pub? Guinness. What else? You stopped drinking Guinness, didn't you? I have stopped drinking Guinness, yeah. You drink juice now. Yeah, I drink more juice than anything else, don't I? That's why you get, your legs are getting quite bigger and bigger. Because I drink juice? Yes. You know, looking back to how I was then, you know, I, was, I wasn't on the right path. So falling ill for me was a, a saving grace, really. And it's got my head straight and clear, and you know, you, you, make, you, you make your choices as to what's important. And I, I couldn't go back to that now, not knowing how I was. I'm very lucky that I've been given a second chance, you know, Plenty of people don't get that. Holly, come here, sit down. Paul? Oh, no, a good girl. It's been 21 months since Alex fell ill. Today, the family woke up to some big news. We're all in bed as normal, Sam included, and Alex just said something like, well, you've been asking me for so long, we might as well just get married. In a very unromantic way, by the way. And I just sort of repeated what he said to me, and I said, are you asking me to marry you? And he said, yes. And that was it. I changed my mind about the whole marriage thing because of everything that I kind of inadvertently put her through, really, and how she coped with it and didn't waver and, and stuck by me. It was quite clear that... It's got to be her. No, I've always expected it because I knew he'd give in at some point. I don't know. I'd drain him down, I'd get him down at some point. I'd nag him down to it. So I knew it was always going to happen. He just didn't know it was going to happen. <laughs> Since falling ill, Alex has been determined to increase his independence. But so far, none of the prosthetic legs have enabled him to walk. It's become quite clear that the National Health Service have got no way of funding the knee joints that I require. 
which means we're going to have to raise the money or the profile of the problem um, on our own. Alex has been introduced to a private trust organiser in the hope of beginning his own formal fundraising organisation. Your year mm. is going to be full of exciting moves forward, things, some things you, you yeah, haven't yeah, even yeah. done before. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. Mm. The search is on for the costly equipment that could transform Alex and his family's life. Yeah. Yeah. A hand cycle? Just put some rocket boosters there. Rocket boosters? Yeah. The cost of it, all told with prosthetics, is about £24,500. That money is, is worth every penny for it. You know, it means that Lucy and I can go out with Sam on his bike. You know, we can do stuff to family. You can't really put a price on a little bit of independence. Over the next few months, Alex's trust begins raising its first money. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for uh, attending the event tonight. A team of volunteers join with a goal to raise the three million pounds Alex is estimated to need over the course of his lifetime. Woman phoned me up today at work and told me that she was in the shower thinking about you this morning. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, brilliant. <laughs> mm. In the shower thinking she about it. She was in the shower, her and her husband. It's very smart. You touch people, you make them well, buy you toilets. <laughs> that is pretty much what the support is, Leo. She constantly takes the piss. <laughs> Now, 22 months after falling ill, Alex is striving ahead and the trust is delivering. Wow, well, it's all about you. Can I have a try? No. Why? Oh, yeah, because I've got one. Yeah. <laughs> this looks like the ginormous gun. <laughs> Now, as the time's going by, I see something new happen every week. I see him now open up a fridge. I see him now pour himself a drink of squash. He's very, very independent now, and he wants to do it all himself. All of this is attitude of mind and life. If you want your life, you will go out and get it. here the other day where uh, Alex opened a cracker and in it was a shoehorn. <laughs> a shoehorn. <laughs> Alex and Lucy have gathered their closest friends together to celebrate their engagement. Two years Alex got ill. No, been two years. Mm -hmm. Can I propose a toast, please, to all of you around the table tonight? It's the first time since I fell ill that I've got you all here together at the same time. And throughout everything that's gone on, your friendship has been invaluable to all of us, even you, Joe. <laughs> even, <laughs> even. And the one person that's made it even better outside of all you lot has been Lucy, oh. who <laughs> as but you've, you've been incredible to me, and I could not be oh, sat you. here now so happy without you. Okay, you. So, can we propose a toast? I think that what's kept us together and kept us quite 
strong and, yeah, it's honesty. I'm quite blunt. We're very opposite people. But I think if I hadn't been honest with you, you weren't going to get better. Yeah. Well, I got better. No, you wouldn't have. Yeah, no, honestly, I would have done. No, you wouldn't have. No, honestly, I would have done. You wouldn't have. <laughs> Let's be honest. I would have been fine. I no, you wouldn't better. have. What I have realised is that I always thought I was the strong person in this relationship. So where I'd gone on for years about him being laid back and, oh, God, he's got no, got no drive, I was totally wrong. He, was, he is the strong one. He is the driven one, not me. I got beer. So then that goes about like that, I think. Yeah. Yes. I nearly done it. Nearly done it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kiss, kiss. Cuddle. Mm. Hey! Don't run away from that little cuddle. Ow! Mwah. Why? Why? Yeah. So I love you, can't I kiss you? Cuddle. Not why was the secret now. The secret? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going hand cycling. Yeah. Pedal with your legs. Use your legs. Use your legs. <laughs> I would say the last two years have been the most tragic, but brilliant two years of my life. From being minutes away from death and then coming all the way through to now being blissfully happy. Out of everything that we've, we've learned in the last two years, I guess foremost is that I think it's just keep going. We never look back. No matter what you come up against, just keep going.